In this video, we're going to be replacing the driver's side front strut in this 2005 Honda Element. We will be reusing the coil spring from the old strut. We'll be compressing it and putting it onto this unit. To remove our wheel, it's going to be a 19 millimeter socket. I'll take our wheel off now. Our backing plate here is pretty well rusted and corroded. We're just gonna make it go away. We're going to remove our caliper. We have two bolts, top and bottom. They're going to be 14 millimeter. At this point, when we have both of these bolts broken free, we're going to make sure we have some kind of hanger ready to hang our caliper on to keep stress off of the brake line or the brake hose. Sometimes these calipers will come right off the brakes. Sometimes you'll need to get in here and pry them off. This one slid off no problem. So what we can do is take our hanger, swing it around here, and we're gonna hang it right on the spring, up and out of the way. Now we can see our pads. We're going to remove our spring hardware. Just squeeze and remove. And our pads. Our pads should pop straight out. Same thing on this side. Now to remove our caliper, we have two bolts on the back. They're going to be 17 millimeters. We did switch over to our breaker bar because these are going to be heavily torqued in. Now at this point, we can remove our caliper bracket and set that aside. So now the only thing holding our rotor in place would typically be two screws, Phillips screws. We have one missing. We do have one still here. We're going to use an impact driver here to try and break that screw free. Just gonna see if it will turn by itself, and it won't. So as you hit this, it's going to turn that Phillips screw, hopefully breaking it free. There we go. We can set that screw aside. Now that the Phillips screw's out, our rotor usually comes off just like this. Sometimes you might need to hit it from the back or the front with the rubber mallet to break it free, but this one's free. So go ahead and take this right off. Our tie rod, we're gonna start by taking off our cotter pin. Just gonna push it back and push it back and out through. And we will not be reusing this. Okay, and our nut here is gonna be a 19 millimeter. We're gonna try an impact, see if we can shock that out. There we go. So now that we have our nut removed, we're looking to remove this, our tie rod end. We're gonna have to knock it up and out of our strut bracket here. So we're just gonna use a hammer. And 
And we can now swing this out of the way. So now our two strut bolts holding it to the knuckle on the bottom here. It's gonna be a 19 on the actual bolt head and a 22 on the nut on the back side. So we're gonna use an impact on the nut. And on the bottom. I'm gonna leave those two bolts in. What we're gonna work on now is everything else attached to the strut assembly, which is gonna be our speed sensor harness and our brake harness or our brake cable attachment point here. So now on our brake line here, we have a bracket. Our bracket, you can see, is somewhat bent. This bolt did not want to move. So because we took our tie rod out, the entire strut, this entire assembly started to rotate. While we were putting force on this bolt to get it to loosen up, we actually put our tie rod back in so that this whole assembly would not rotate while we were trying to remove this bolt. So we actually got that bolt to move just a little bit and now we're back on camera here. We'll continue to take this bolt out without the tie rod in because it now moves. We're gonna remove our 12 mil bolt here holding on our brake hose to our strut. There's your bolt. All right, now from here, we're gonna actually take our caliper and just spin it over to this side and our ABS speed sensor clip actually came out for us. There's one of the two that we need to remove. The other one is straight around the back. So we would have used some panel pliers, panel tool pliers here to pull this out. That's what we're gonna use in the back. Just gonna squeeze that. And pull that plug right out. Now that this is out of the way, and your brake is out of the way, your caliper and your brake hose is out of the way, we're actually gonna take our caliper, move it a little further out of the way, so we only have to worry about this here. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna hang it Right here, for right now. Actually, a better spot is probably hang it right here. Okay, so now we're gonna leave one bolt in here. We're gonna take our bottom bolt out. I usually just like to leave the one that's stuck in. Usually out of the two, one of them's loose, one of them's not. This one right now is taking all the pressure and all the weight. That's why this one's kinda stuck in there. So I'll take the easier one out. I'm gonna leave this in here, just so everything doesn't fall apart and open up when we remove our bolts on top. Now we're up top. We have one, two, three 14 millimeter nuts that we're gonna need to take off on the top of our strut. As soon as we take these off, our strut will be loose and probably drop downwards, which is why we left the one bolt in down below. We'll go ahead and remove these now. All right, so you can see our strut is free and loose. Now we can go underneath and remove it from the vehicle. So now that our top three bolts are loose, we can come back down here and remove this one bolt, basically holding our strut in position. While we remove this, you wanna be careful not to let it drop down and damage your CV axle boot here. So we're gonna be very careful while doing this. Actually gonna use the back of a hammer here and just pry up a little bit to relieve some of that pressure. There we go. So now when we release, now from here, I have a little bit of upwards pressure holding our strut up. We're gonna get in behind our knuckle with the pry bar. We're gonna pry our knuckle forward and our strut rearward like that. 
separate the two. Now you want to be very careful pulling your knuckle forward with your CV axle shaft attached. You do not want to separate the back of your axle shaft by pulling them apart. All right, so we're going to push that backwards just enough to clear our strut. Now we have the speed sensor cable over here, really nothing over here. So we're going to try and take our strut out in the rear of this area here. So we're going to just work our strut out of position and out of the vehicle. Like so. So we have our strut compressor set up. Ideally, you want this set up level. As you start to put your, your strut in here, things will shift and move. But you want these to be as level and as even as possible. So what we're going to do is take our strut. And we're going to start on one side. I'm going to start on the bottom side. I'm going to tighten this down, which will lock that coil in. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side, on the bottom. Now, because the coils aren't even, you're going to have to offset things. But ideally, you want this centered. All right, so it's looking pretty centered. We're just going to go by this bar in the middle here. It's pretty centered. We don't want to kick too far back or too far out. So it looks pretty good. We'll bring our two top arms in. And we're probably going to have to grab our two top arms a little awkward here. What's going to end up happening is we're going to compress. All right, so these will compress down slightly. These will compress down. Once you have everything set up and it's safely set, go ahead and compress your spring. What we're trying to do here is loosen this just enough so that our top plate is free. And what we're going to do now is undo the nut at the top. We're going to have to put an Allen in the top here to hold the center section, and then a wrench to take our nut off of here. So in the top here, which is our piston that runs through the center, we're going to put a 9 millimeter on there and a 17 millimeter on the nut. And see if we can use this to our advantage. And see if we can spin that or break that nut free. Now with that top nut removed, we can set that top nut aside, and we can drop out the cartridge out the bottom. So our new strut cartridge comes compressed with our nut on the top. We can take our nut and set it aside. And what we're going to do now is release the piston here. It's held in, it's shipped with this lock. So now we have our piston is compressed and it's locked in with this metal wire here. I'm just going to use a piece of wood just to save our hand. We're going to compress the piston and release this lock. And we'll let that piston come all the way out. And we're just going to compress it one or two more times just to cycle it. It's been compressed for shipping. Just make sure it runs through perfectly fine. All right, looks good, sounds good, no grinding. What we're going to do now is take our boot and put it over our piston. Now we're going to take our boot and slide it over our piston. And we're going to slide it down until it meets that first shoulder where it's going to stop like that. Once we have that done, we're ready to install it into our spring. We're going to load it into the spring from the bottom up. We're going to put our nut in our other hand. We're going to raise this through, through the top mounting plate, and then thread our nut on to hold it in place. Once we have our nut threaded on a couple of threads, we can release. The unit is together, and now we can tighten it down. So with an 18 millimeter wrench, 
We're gonna snug this top bolt up before we release tension on our spring. What we're gonna do is actually grab the bottom of our strut and the spring coil. You'll see that there is a spot where the bottom coil meets up. You see there's a little step in the bottom plate. That half coil there is gonna go into this bottom step. I'm just gonna hold that and squeeze them up together, which will raise our top plate. We're only gonna be able to get so far doing this, then the center's gonna wanna spin. So we'll tighten it down until we reach that point. And 19 millimeter wrench. Okay, so now you can see that the top is spinning, which means the center piston is spinning, the top plate is also spinning. So we reach the point now where we have to lock the center in place. So to hold the center down tight, which would be the piston in the center, it's gonna be an eight millimeter wrench. And we can tighten down the bottom. And what you're doing here is just pulling everything together. We're gonna hit a certain point where we're gonna have to release pressure on the spring. And we'll get it tight as we can before then. Just want to keep looking down the bottom to make sure that spring is right in the right spot. All right, we've got a good amount here. At this point, we can go ahead and release tension on the spring. We want to make sure that the mounting plate across the top is flat to that surface. Once we have established that that is flat, this is snugged up, and the spring is in the right position, we can start to release tension on the spring. Okay, everything looks to be in a good position. Everything looks to be in the right place. So now that our machine is loose, while our strut is still in place, I'll just go ahead and tighten this down just a little bit more. Okay. Once the top nut is tight, we can go ahead and remove our strut from our compressor tool. And now we're ready to bring this to the vehicle. From here, we're gonna put our strut in and up to the top here. So we're gonna try and align our top three bolts first. All right, so we've got two out of three. What I'm gonna do here is just put a nut on there by maybe a couple of threads so these two don't fall out and we'll have to work on angling our strut to get it to sit up into there all right so we've worked just by positioning our strut a little bit differently and twisting it and tilting it we've got our third bolt to come through or our third stud to come through so we'll just put our nuts on there and tighten those down by hand. Now from here what we're gonna do is go underneath, put a little upward pressure on the entire suspension assembly. All right, so now if you need to twist your strut assembly to get it to line up with your knuckle, now's the time to do that. And you can see our bolt holes are not aligned. What we're looking for is to make sure that our knuckle goes into here. So now we're gonna do is align our bolts. Now that we have our knuckle into our strut, push and align our bolts here. We're gonna pull this back so we can stop our bolt coming through. There we 
go. I'll put our nut on. I'm just gonna snug this up. And now we can put our top bolt in. Sometimes you have to push and pull to align the holes here. Whoops, a little bit too much pull. We're just using a pry bar on one side to kind of help us align the holes. And thread on our nut. Now from here what we can do is put our tie rod end in place. I have to turn the strut slightly and push our tie rod end in place there. Okay, now we can put on our nylon lock nut for our ball joint. And again, that's just finger tight just to hold our ball joint in place. Because what's gonna happen when we start to tighten these things down is this assembly might wanna twist. This tie rod end here is gonna stop that from happening. So we'll come back when everything's under load and we'll tighten everything up. Now with our suspension under load, we're gonna tighten down our top three bolts here. We're gonna tighten them down to 32 foot pounds. All right, these are gonna be 15 millimeters. We're gonna tighten it down. We're actually gonna to torque it down to 32 foot pounds. Now with our suspension under load, we're gonna tighten down our two strut to knuckle bolts. It's gonna be a 19 on one side, a 22 on the other. We're gonna to torque them down to 116 foot-pounds. Now we can torque our tie rod end down to 32 foot-pounds. All right, and now we can release pressure on our suspension. Lower that control arm and floor jack. And before we put our old strut into the recycling bin, this bracket here that was holding our speed sensor cabling we're gonna take that bracket and bolt off and reuse it on the new one. It's gonna be a 10 millimeter. All right, that's the part and the bolt we're looking for. So now we're gonna take our bracket and put it on our new strut. And now, while we're here, we can take our speed sensor cable, clip it into the bracket in the back, just push right in, and our forward clip here, it's just gonna push right in as well. So our clip just broke. The bottom was already broken, and the top, we tried to just open it up a touch more so it would stay in, definitely just broke even further. So what we're gonna do, we'll probably revisit this, but for right now, to hold it in place and out of our way, is we're gonna put a zip tie around this and around the bracket. What this will allow us to do is keep moving and hold this in position until we're ready to revisit this clip here. And we'll 
trim that zip tie. And now we're going to move on to our brakes. Our caliper, we hung down low out of our way. And we're going to take it, we're going to flip it over, and we're going to hang it on our new strut. Now we can take our brake line here and reattach. All right, so now we can take our brake hose, brake hose bracket, and put that in place. And that's going to be a 12 millimeter bolt. Now what I'm actually noticing here is that the speed sensor is this wire is running correctly here. If you take your caliper, put it into position, it's going to put more strain on both cables. All right. So what we're going to do is rerun our speed sensor outside here. So now at this point, we're going to want to make sure that this hub surface is nice and clean and ready to receive the back of our rotor. This is actually very clean, but if yours needed a little bit more attention and it had some corrosion on there, you can get in there with a wire brush and clean up whatever you need to. If you need to use an air tool or lightly sand off some really heavy corrosion, you can do that. Ours just has some nasty grease and oil built up on here. We're going to hit it with some brake clean. Just give it a quick little dry, because what we're going to do from here is hit it with some anti-seize. We'll let that flash off for a minute, and we'll come back with some anti-seize spray. So now we're going to use some anti-seize, but we're going to use it in an aerosol form. So instead of spraying everything in the general area, we're just going to use our paper towel here just to stop it from getting where it doesn't need to be. And we're just going to put a light coat on our hub surface. We're going to line up our Phillips screw holes. We're going to put it in place. And for this vehicle specifically, we only had one Phillips screw in our old rotor, so we're going to replace the one screw. So we're going to push our rotor in nice and tight. We're going to pick one of the two and put our Phillips screw in. I'm going to hold the rotor in place and we're going to tighten that down. Now we can take our caliper bracket and put it onto our knuckle, put our two bolts in. And again, these are going to be 17 millimeters. We're just going to snug these up and we're going to come back and torque them down. So now we're going to torque our caliper bolts down to 79 foot pounds. Now that our caliper bracket is torqued down, we can install our brake pads. We're just going to simply put the bottom tab into the metal slot, push down, and align the top and push into the rotor. 
Now that you have your pads in and squeeze nice and tight to the rotor, we have two last pieces of hardware. They're going to be these spring clips. There are holes on your brake pads. You're just going to squeeze these together and put them in the holes. Sometimes these want to fly out, so watch your eyes and be careful that they might want to run around the room. Okay, I'm going to take it off of the hanger. Again, we're going to be careful not to stress the brake hose. Slide it onto our pads and into position for our bolts on the pins. Once it's in position, take one of the two bolts and thread it in place to hold our caliper. So with our two caliper bolts, now snugged up by hand, you want to make sure on the bottom here, your caliper pins, the pieces that we greased earlier, you want to make sure they align with the caliper. There's a slot that those pins will sit into, which will stop the pin from spinning when you tighten these down. You want to make sure that's aligned. If it's misaligned, you may also not be able to get your bolt in. So we've got those both aligned top and bottom. And now, with our 14 millimeter socket, we can tighten these down to 25 foot pounds. And so now we can install our wheel. Sometimes when I'm having an issue centering or getting the wheel on nice and flat, I like to do a top nice and tight. Push in, do a bottom nice and tight, and then rock back and forth till I get those two nice and tight. And that usually helps me get a wheel nice and flat. All right, now we can do the other ones. Come in here with our 19 millimeter. Just snug these up. All right, now to torque these down, we're gonna have to put the vehicle on the ground so the wheel doesn't spin. Now that our vehicle's on the ground, we're gonna torque our lug nuts down to 80 foot-pounds. We're gonna do it in a crisscross pattern. And then sometimes, if you really feel the need to, you can run around a second time just to make sure. After finishing this installation, it's important to have an alignment done on your vehicle. And that's it. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.